a patient with multiple epileptic dysplasia for a back type. You see uh, changes on an X-ray in uh, 30 years on the left, 40 years in the middle, and in 50 years on the right X-ray. And uh, it was saluted by replacement of both hips. This is a patient with pseudoechondroplasia in a mother and son. Uh, the diagnosis was uh, uh, proved in a small boy and uh, according uh, uh, the diagnosis uh, retrospectively was, uh, was done diagnosis also in his mother. The mother was treated by surgery, corrective osteotomies of bow legs in two stages was carried out. You see the result of surgery. This is another patient with metaphysical dysplasia Schmidt type. Uh, at, at first, in preschool age, he was treated by uh, corrective osteotomy in supracondylar region and below knees, and uh, uh, the. <coughs> Manual correction was carried out and uh, plaster of Paris fixation. It was done uh, by uh, my first chief, Professor Kubat, and I assisted uh, him this surgery. Uh, later, uh, we uh, lengthened uh, shanks and uh, provided corrective osteotomy. This is a result in adult uh, young woman. This is next patient with the same diagnosis. Uh, the parents uh, are also affected, mother suffers from dyschondrostosis, but father uh, suffers from Schmidt dysplasia, like uh, their daughter. The, the daughter was treated by uh, corrective osteotomies. We provided it in two stages. Uh, there is very important to correct deformity in one leg, uh, in one stage. You can, uh, you can uh, uh, correct uh, malposition of uh, big joints. That is why we uh, correct it uh, in the femur in proximal part and in, uh, in shank also in proximal part. Not only varosity, but also the torsion was corrected. <coughs> uh, this patient with spondyl epimetal dysplasia, Tarda type, and you see the result. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, result of. Uh, treatment by uh, partial medial epiphysiolysis of distal femurs. So uh, it is so called hemi epiphysiolysis. <coughs> to, 
to, to this method will be devoted one lecture later. Uh, Ostrogenes imperfecta is an in inherited disorder, particularly of human connective tissue, especially the bones. Currently, 15 clinical and different types of the disease are described. The main clinical feature are brittle bones, bone deformities, and high risk of fractures. Other clinical signs observed in affected patients are blue sclera, hearing loss, dentogenes imperfecta, high probability of joints, ligament laxity, and bones of skull. In some cases, are also described defects of respiratory and cardiovascular systems. Incidence ranges from 1 to 25,000. It is in mild osteogenic imperfecta types and uh, 1 to uh, uh, 50,000. Uh, it is in uh, very severe lethal forms. Uh, you see examples of clinical picture, severe deformities of legs uh, in type 3, type 1B, type 1A, blue square, and severe changes on skeleton. You see here. This is one case with type 3, uh, multiple collective osteotomies, and uh, nailing was carried down. Uh, what is interesting in these severe cases, it means type 3 is. Uh, vanishing and disappearing of medullary canal in the uh, convexity of uh, bone deformities. The same patient in an adult age, uh, she is uh, able of self-supporting, uh, she drives uh, her car and uh, walk by uh, apple. It is like chimpanzee or uh, apples. <laughs> On the basis of genetic origin are distinguished collagenous and non-collagenous form of Boston imperfecta. Collagenous form include the first four types and their genetic origin are mutations of COL1A1 or COL1A2 genes which encode collagen type 1 protein. Non-collagenous types of uh, osteoimperfecta result from mutation of genes crucial for bone mineralization Serpentine F1 in Ostrogen Imperfecta type 4. S secondly, uh, uh, these are involved in the uh, 3 hydroxylation complex. Uh, Ostrogen Imperfecta type 7 uh, mutation CRTAP <coughs> or E type. Uh, eight uh, so-called leprevan or e type nine uh, uh, gene, gene defect PPIB. Uh, in the third place, there are mutation of genes acting as collagen type one, uh, called chaperones in 
OE type 10 is known as serpine H1. In OE type 11 is known FKBP10. Crucial for the bone cell differentiation uh, in OE uh, 12 uh, is called SP7. Uh, included in embryogenesis and skeletogenesis, uh, there is known uh, uh, for OE uh, 13 uh, gene BMW1 and cell differentiation. Uh, uh, this is uh, in OE. 14 TMEM 38B or affecting osteoblast function. Uh, collagen type 1 mutations are mm -hmm. present in 80 to 90 percent of all OE cases and result from call. 1A1 or call uh, 1A2 mutations. Crucial areas of these genes important for correct collagen type 1 uh, proteosynthesis are Gre XY sequences which occur in 338 repetitive triplets in the helix domain of the genes. Secondly, transcription factors binding sites in the third place, CPG rich islands, which could subcome the methylation process. On the fourth place, multiligand binding regions, which bind other extracellular matrix molecules like integrates, cartilage oligomeric matrix protein, serpin H1, and so on. Mutations of all of these areas negative affect the collagen type 1 processing and synthesis. Uh, in a research study uh, were analyzed the COL1A1 gene of 41 OE patients using the methods polymerized chain reaction and Sanger sequencing. Mutations were identified in eight cases. Three nonsense, two missense, one silent mutation, and two splicing variants. In, in table, it is uh, uh, summarized. And you can have a look. This is patient uh, with familial expansive osteolysis. It is also very rare and diagnosis. Only a few cases was described in the world literature. At first we were thinking on some new type of osteolysis perfecta, but later with Professor Kozlowski the diagnosis familial expansive osteolysis. You see very peculiar changes of long bones. We begin to treat uh, this patient with bisphosphonates. Uh, she was uh, uh, referred to us with pains of deformed uh, long bones, and after three months of bisphosphonate treatment, uh, she felt relief of pains and was satisfied. After two years, we provided this surgical procedure, uh, uh, osteotomy in two levels and assured uh, nailing. And you see. Result. She now is able uh, 
tu walk at home originally she was uh, turned only on wheelchair patient with fibular hypoplasia syndrome type 2 according Achterman and Kalamchi classification uh, we repeatedly elongated uh, his shank we stabilized ankle joint and at the age of 13 we uh, begin with uh, with uh, elongation of the right shank by a method of so-called distraction epiphysalysis. It is uh, yeah, uh, of uh, gross plate. <laughs> um, you, you see a result of, 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 of the treatment in, in one stage we elongated by this method uh, tibia on 18 centimeters. Later we corrected the valgosity of proximal tibia. This is a result of adult patient. This is next uh, patient with both uh, side affection. Uh, we, uh, the right shank was lengthened in two sessions. <laughs> and you see it. 17 years of age result of treatment. This is patient with so-called split hand foot malformation with tibial hyperplasia. There is classification of different types of uh, of tibial hypoplasia. We, we describe some uh, new types, this type for A, for C, and uh, the new type uh, was uh, also described as congenital deficiency of the tibia. Uh, it was uh, on the rest of skeleton that was uh, uh, found at the medieval monastic cemetery in Olomouc, it is in Czech Republic. Uh, this case was reported in Journal of Palopathology. Mm -hmm. And this boy has these types, this, this type. And, and this, this type, yeah. We uh, reconstructed uh, uh, right foot, uh, right hand, and we provide ex-articulation in the level of knee joint on the left side. He is, and he is fitted with prosthesis. Next case, also vestibular hypoplasia. We treated central polydactyly with synostosis. And uh, the, uh, due to severe contraction of the right knee and, and 
no function, we indicated uh, X articulation in knee joint. You see the result of our treatment. The boy is happy with prosthesis. Clinical anthropological genetic and radiologic examination together with laboratory examination and dual energy densitometry with application of child software remain the basic prerequisite to specify the diagnosis, including mild faults, and to monitor the course of bone disorders. At indicated cases, the histological, histochemical, electromicroscopic investigation and or molecular genetic examination are decisive. The first aim of the nosology is to prove and reference list and only secondarily to help in the diagnostic process. It must therefore coexist with other classifications that are based either on the clinical and radiographic approach to diagnosis or the affected molecular systems and pathways. The nosology should be useful for the diagnosis of patients with genetic skeletal disorders and the delineation of clinical entities and novel disorders by providing an overview of established nosologic entities. And for scientists looking for the clinical correlates of genes, proteins and pathways involved in skeletal biology. Symptomatic comprehensive treatment is focused on achievement the best function, stability and gain stereotype, and at the second place on aesthetics. Indications and surgical timing is often completely different in generalized deformities in comparison with isolated limb defects. Individual approach with the highest ethics to every case. Development of clinical radiological features of patients suffering from genetic skeletal disorders leads to biomechanical severe deformities of extremities and spine with premature joint degenerative changes and osteoporosis. The main aim of comprehensive treatment in childhood is correction of bone deformities and bone metabolism to achieve an individual peak bone mass in adulthood and to prevent premature osteoarthritis. The aim of comprehensive care for patients suffering from genetic skeletal disorders is to prepare handicapped children for a dignified, meaningful and satisfying life and help them to incorporate themselves into society as individuals who can achieve their highest potential. My acknowledgement belongs to Professor Kozlovsky, Professor Michael Bellemore, uh, to Professor Solter and Professor Wedge, and to uh, my uh, uh, close co-workers from abroad, Professor Tomáš Karský, Jacques Chenot, and the others. Thank you for your kind attention. And now I would like to go on with the Next lecture on hypophosphatemic rickets and rickets. This time is very short and discussion uh, will be together.